It's December 27th, 2011. By now, I've written two albums, this being the second. I wrote to keep myself busy and sane. I wanted to create worlds that were rosier than mine. I tried to channel overwhelming emotions. I'm surprised at how far all of it has taken me. I was never alone, as much as it felt like it. As much as I still do sometimes, I never was. I don't think I ever could be. So thank you, all of you, for everything good. I feel like a free man. If I listen closely, I can hear the sky falling too. Oh, if that doesn't give you nostalgia. Have you ever woken up from a nightmare immediately looking for a distraction to take your mind off things? That's what I feel like is happening here. A tornado flew around my room before you came. Excuse the mess it made. It usually doesn't rain. Instantly, we hear Frank's extensive vocal range take center stage. It sets pretty high expectations for the rest of the album, so his versatility is something I'll watch out for moving forward. I think I've heard this one before. You were cool enough to kick it. Got a beach house I could sell you in Idaho. Since you think I, I remember, how could I forget oh. how you feel? Frank shares his heartbreak, trying to cope with unrequited love. His sarcasm and underlying frustration create an all too familiar bitterness. He knows that he has to move on. My spirit keep it alive. We'll go down this road. Till it turns from color to black and white Or do you not think so far This is such a special feeling Reality sets in and the magic is disappearing. We're leaving the honeymoon phase behind, still loving someone when the relationship isn't as bright, new, and colorful as you once saw it. Ah, uh, this is so beautiful. It's kind of a shame that the only association I've had with it before listening to it, sitting down listening to it, was that vine that went viral about the potato flying around my room. Um. Really, <laughs> <laughs> I think. Okay, seeing the themes here, the channel, channel flipping. I can only describe this track as seductive and sensual. Pleasant, soothing ear candy. The breaths and vocalizations all make it that much more intimate. And I just ran out of Trojans. Oh. I don't live in Denver. I grew up in Sierra Leone. Oh my god. <laughs> her pink skies were keeping warm. That line lends the idea of comfort and shelter to the following track, Sweet Life. Little references between the songs are honestly the cherry on top for me. I love that. I have a feeling that abandoned mission means the couple considered an abortion after a surprise pregnancy, but they don't follow through, instead bringing new life into this world. Suddenly, everything feels clearer, like we were pushed out of the womb, coming out for air. Baby girl, if you knew what I know. So gorgeous. That was so pretty. The best song wasn't the single, but you weren't either. Living in Ladera Heights. This track sounds as sweet as the title suggests, with an excellent call and response of the high and low notes, the piano, and the waves crashing. It feels like there's no care in the world. It sounds like a dream. Peaches and lime, sweet life, sweet life, sweet life, sweet life. The narrator 
seems to have struck up a friendship with someone who has had every need catered to throughout their life. He finds the disparity between the sweet life and the actual world to be quite shocking, but you can't really blame them. Some people live their whole lives oblivious to how tough it can be for others, unconcerned by anything outside of their bubble. It's not always their fault, it's just disjointed. Whatever you like, whatever feels good, whatever takes your mountain high, sweet life, oh. sweet life, sweet life. Love those drums. And the water is exactly what I wanted. That bass guitar, my god. Is going ape shit crazy. After finally getting to feel this same oblivion, he can't help but feel off about it. The final chorus might just be criticism at this point. I feel a lot of frustration, like he wants to explain the blind spots to his new friend, but he can't, or the other person doesn't want to see them. There are... Stop thinking of this as being money. It's just money. I'm gonna make money. It's the difference between happy and being happy. We as the listeners are brought back to the real world for a bit. It's a snippet of the realities of growing up outside the cushy bubble of Sweet Life or the next track, Super Rich Kids, a sobering track placement. What a crazy difference between Sweet Life and not just money, oh my god. Whoa. Many bottles of this wine we can't pronounce. I grew up in public schools with extremely wide wealth gaps. I couldn't articulate it at the time, but it's so obvious now. When I listen to this song, I specifically picture the super rich kids of my high school. With nothing but fake friends. Start my day up on the roof. There's nothing like this type of view. Yeah. Wash my back three times a day. This shower head feels so amazing. <laughs> I used to really resent these rich kids because they came across as spoiled, selfish, mean, and unfriendly. But now that I'm older, I realize those are all symptoms of disconnection. They were just kids trying to cope or call out for attention. The song did an excellent job at drawing those school memories out of me, even though it's been years since I've even thought about these people. Rich kids with nothing but fake friends. Real Close your eyes to what you can oh, imagine. We are the Zanny Nash and Caddy Smash and Braddy Assy. Maddie's nasty, Daddy's jagged. Panic and patch me up. Pappy the Lashkey does. Earl effortlessly describes the explosive attitudes and emotional immaturity of the neglected youth. No amount of money can fill that void. The delivery was amazing. I say I jump, I never do. But when I'm drunk, I act the fool. Oh, it's an alternate verse, okay. The song begins and ends on this roof. Such powerful foreshadowing with the setting. It's a tragic end to the rich kid's life. I never got to feel a sense of purpose, responsibility, connection, or real love. I'm searching for We once had things in common. Oh, so cute. Not the only thing we share is the refrigerator. You always smoking in the house. What if my mother comes over? The song sounds like making peace, leaving a relationship you care for, on good terms with good intentions. There's a natural ambivalence to letting go. I thought that was gonna go in a different direction. 
You care for them so deeply, you have history, and you want the best for them. Isn't that love? Why am I trying to let go at all? And the cycle continues. I love that sound. Hold on, my alarm is ringing. Was it ringing for two minutes and I didn't notice? Oh fuck, there's no way. Okay, no, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. There's only so much you can do. You can't force someone to change for you. The narrator knows this, but he struggles to prioritize his needs and set boundaries. Uh, I was bracing for a crash. Uh. Oh, this might be it. I have chills. Just from this, like, rumbling bass. You don't know how little you matter until you're all alone In the middle of Arkansas with a little rock left in that glass dick this song is tragically beautiful. People who live in glass houses should not throw stones, as the full proverb says. The cracks from the impact shattered this person's life in half. Once surrounded by loved ones, now on the other side, alone with a vice they once abhorred. Crack, rock, crack, rock. Crack, rock, crack, rock. You're shucking and jiving, stealing and robbing. To get the fix and that you're itching for Your family stopped inviting you to things Won't let you hold the infant You hit them stones And you broke your home While addiction is common ground for me And what I related to most on first listen It goes much deeper than that Cricket cap, that cap How much dope can you push to me? Fucking pick your shots 300 men will search for me my brother get pops and don't know I hear the sound don't know I hear the brown Crack rock is stigmatized differently than the white lines and super rich kids, for example. But the class and racial divisions are no coincidence with a recent history of criminalizing rather than treating those victims of addiction. That one's a tough lesson. I was just thinking how difficult, or sorry, I was just thinking how like crazy it is that this was released in 2012. I mean, at that time I was 15 and there was some like alternative media that would talk about issues like this, but drug addiction is very stigmatized and it's just, it's hard for me to talk about, but it's really disheartening, especially at this verse, like Oh my god. The cycle just sucks because the people around you want to help, they want to see you in a better place, but they don't know what to do and I don't know, maybe they get overwhelmed and they feel like the only option is to shun you from everything. When you're in the cycle of um, drug addiction, it's night and day just having someone tell you that there are options and you can get help and then it doesn't have to be this way. But yeah, for those who don't receive that, it just kind of spirals out of control. This epic pretty much has three interesting perspectives, a journey from beginning to end. Even though it's long, it effortlessly keeps my attention, switching channels between the stories, each visually different from the last. I respect the ambition in this song, along with the special blend of genres. It does feel like the peak of the album, maybe forming a pyramid in the tracklist itself. We'll run to the future, shining like diamonds, and trim from 
In the first narrative, we have historical fiction for the sake of the inciting incident. Cleopatra betrayed her people by presumably sleeping with the enemy, and because of this, women's sexuality can no longer be trusted to be their own. such an interesting blend of like electronic and the rest of the Frank Ocean style that we've heard so far on this album. Part two. Ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> That's ambitious. Big sun coming strong through the motel blinds Wake up to your girl, for now let's call her Cleopatra Cleopatra She's working at the pyramid tonight Working at the pyramid we fast forward to modern day Cleopatra, who really doesn't own her sexuality. We soon meet her pimp, who lives a lavish lifestyle off of her efforts. The pimp objectifies her only as a moneymaker, detaching her from this narrative. Bubbles in my champagne, let it be some jazz playing. Top floor motel suite, twisting my cigars. Floor model TV with the VCR, got boobies in my damn chain. In an interview, Frank stated that pimps and his family served as inspiration for him to write in his words, a fantasy built off that dynamic, but you can only write what you know to a point. Bills pay, that keep my bills pay. She's working at the pyramid tonight. Working at the pyramid. Yeah, yeah. Working oh, it's so at interesting the to compare tonight. like yeah, Cleopatra. Working at the pyramid tonight, yeah. Working at the pyramid. Ooh, Sorry, this is why I do voiceovers because it's so hard for me to think tonight, and listen at the yeah. same time. <laughs> working at the pyramid. You showed up after work, I'm bathing your body, touch you in places only I know. After working, Cleopatra returns to the motel, bringing her work back with her. She makes the love interest, who is our third perspective for those keeping track, feel special and important, but it's hard to know if it's love or just what she's learned over time. Baby, but your love ain't free. No, mm -hmm. she's working out here in the night. Oh my god, are we getting a one and a half minute guitar solo by John Mayer? <laughs> it's a beautiful moment, and honestly this solo reminds me a lot of the reflective section in Dry Land 2001 by Underscores and Gabby Start. I always get lost in it. We continue this theme of being trapped in circumstance. We even see parallels to pyramids, the pimp and the stripper, compared to the drug lord and the drug mule. One is a little more sinister than the other, but they're both keeping these women controlled to some degree. Girl, you know you lost, lost in a thrill of it all. Los Angeles, India, lost on a train, lost. Got on my buttercream, silk shirt, and it's Versace. The atmosphere is that of longing, but constantly moving and traveling. And the repetitive, catchy chorus really drives and emphasizes the question is this really what you want to be doing with your life? If I ever 
was at a store Can't believe I got her out here cooking dough Cooking dough I promise she'll be whipping meals up for a family of her own Someday the story being told is a little more subtle than in prior tracks. The clues are slight, up until this final bridge. It's not a track I tend to gravitate toward, but the sound is still infectious. Sometimes I find myself humming the tune. the concept of flipping through the channels and having different stories for each one. Honestly, I didn't know much about John Mayer until someone sent me an interview he did with Zane Lowe. I really appreciate his true artistic outlook on creativity. I'm sure Frank Ocean appreciates that as well. My spits and beer chest Stage diver, sky diver Likes to fuck boys and bands Likes to watch oh. westerns and ride me without the hand. It's such a liberating, almost spiritual experience to lose yourself in a crowd while watching your favorite artist perform. We have a lot of carefree and impulsive, fun imagery as we transition to a story of forbidden love. In the sky, monks in the mosh pit, stage diving Dalai Lama, <laughs> feet covered in cut flowers. They mosh for enlightened Just a virgin, love on a getaway. Get away, and that sunset they're gonna try and get away, get away. I pay Mudra. I never asked for much, but please keep up love. Unlike the previous tracks, this is one where the protagonist follows their heart and has a beautiful ending. As long as they have each other, they feel like they can overcome anything. Your father's army trailing us, we escaped him. Even with his archers bows at our backs. We're lost in the jungle underneath these clouds There's a monsoon that never ends It does feel like such a fun meta song to play out in front of a crowd outside at a festival or something. If only Frank Ocean enjoyed performing in front of a crowd outside at a festival or something. Oh, right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Love the drums on that one. You must shrink for the hour and leave the meter running. He said, Allahu Akbar. I told him, Don't curse me if it brings me to my knees. It's a bad religion. I've talked before about how growing up in a religious household, there has been a lot of guilt and frustration around sexuality, even more so with the cult-like behaviors associated with those beliefs, all of which are referenced in this song. This sounds like a one-man choir, Frank's passionate and emotional depth, the single clap echoing in an empty chapel. I read the Tumblr letter Frank released alongside this album, and it brought me to tears. But now, he's free to be himself. It had me feeling the way I do. I do remember um, when Channel Orange was first being recommended to me in my comment section, I think it was around the time that I covered Flower Boy and people were comparing the two, saying that they both kind of came out with their music or, or used it as, as a, a way to express themselves. So beautiful that music can be an outlet for that. Ooh, Andre 3000. What do you think my brain is made for? Is it just a container for the mind? 
He doesn't want to give his sexuality a label. In an interview with GQ, he shared, People should pay attention to that in the letter. I didn't need to label it for it to have impact. Because people realize everything that I say is so relatable. Because when you're talking about romantic love, both sides, in all scenarios, feel the same shit. <laughs> Why did it just suddenly get so loud? For show, and the aliens are watching live. Nothing matters. Cotton candy, pleasure over matter. Since you've been gone, I've been having withdrawals. You were such a habit to call. I ain't myself at all, had to tell myself, no. Nah, she better with some fella with a regular job. Butter knife, water life, anyway. I'm building all the clock, stop, what am I, anyway? She had the kind of body that would probably intimidate. The Andre 3000 verse is lovely, speaking on the pulse of attraction and how you can experience that draw when you least expect it. I might check out his other work. We return to the theme of running away before being taken on a colorful journey from pink to gray to purple to gray, finally settling on blue. Gray There's a lot of questioning, uncertainty, and a constantly shifting dynamic. The training, chanting, and sparring feel so emotionally tense, but Frank ends up realizing that it shouldn't be a struggle. Love should feel like love. Well, frankly, when that ocean's so motherfucking good, make a squat the motherfucking wood. Make <laughs> well, a frankly, when that plank. ocean. Make a rob a motherfucking bank with no mask on and a rush to revolve. Whoa, you're just ending there? I was gonna say I love the association with color. Just channel orange, white, or is it white, pink matter, blue used to be my favorite color. I wanna see pom poms from the stairs. My Forrest Gump. fingertips and my lips, they burn from the cigarettes. Oh. Forrest Gump, you run my mind, boy. Such a sweet, pretty piece, as well as a cute closing song for the album. It does feel like the end credits before the after credits scene, the postlude end. I was screaming, run 44, but you kept running past the end zone. <laughs> Forrest Gump, this is love, I know it's true. The chorus is catchy, and Frank Ocean's vocals are soothing, per usual. The song invokes a sense of nostalgia for a past love or relationship, relatable, beautiful, and heartfelt. It's been probably a decade since I've seen the movie Forrest Gump, so I don't remember or pick up on any of these callbacks aside from the obvious running theme, but I love the concept. So cute! So precious. Looks like all we got is each I was literally thinking it should be louder. <laughs> our daughters and our sons are just candles in the sun. This definitely feels like a sudden disconnection. A lot is going on, and I'm not sure where to shift my focus, so Frank takes care of that for us. He directs our attention with dynamics, like a film. The music weaves in front of and behind the running car. There's a fuzzy conversation going on where we can only hear bits and pieces. We hear the main character leave, walking on wet ground, going inside. The show's over. No. <laughs> oh, the storytelling in that is crazy. So the whole time, I guess I was imagining that you were flipping through channels like on a TV, but I guess it was like car radio. Wow, what an end. Uh, 
Oh, I'm so glad I took the dive today. I feel like I just want to know what all the hype is about. Ob obviously, there are a lot of things that flew over my head throughout this album. I'm so excited to dive into it. I already have a lot to talk about with a couple of these tracks, and I'm just so glad that we could listen to it today. So thank you for listening with me. Hope you're doing well. I mean, compared to Lavender, I don't know which one I'm going to love more or less. But yeah, the entire time I was just thinking, 2012? This aged so well. Um <laughs> I was really, really worried that I wasn't going to like it, but I'm happy to announce that I did. Anyway, no one knows what's coming next, so stay tuned, stay safe, and be kind.